you know it's been said that forgiveness is not so much for the other person when you give it it's really for yourself it will enable you to go forward ok because it's very hard to go forward if you can't forgive because you're stuck you're stuck in a spot so by I'll bet you can speak from experience I oh, can yeah sure I, I've had situations I oh. was stuck you know I had a uh, a friend and her name was uh, Sandra Berry Young and uh, she'd married and she had a couple daughters and one night as she and her husband and daughters were watching television they thought wouldn't it be nice to have some ice cream well there was no ice cream in the house so she ran down to the store it was at, at night and picked up a thing of good ice cream and was going back out to her car and two men uh, abducted her at knife point in her own car and uh, so she was in the back seat of her car with one of the guys with a knife while uh, the second guy was driving and they went up into the San Bernardino mountains and man was making her have uh, uh, have her do particular favors on him you can imagine yeah. and when they got up to the into the San Bernardino mountains somewhere in the remote area they forced her out and, and asked her to uh, take off her clothes and, and then they proceeded to rape her over two hours in this gravel she said everything was just bloody you know from the gravel and um, uh, she said, I didn't know what to do. She said, uh, finally, I said, you know, when you do this, you do this to Jesus. And um, they just backed off immediately and they said, we're not, we're not gay. You know, <laughs> doing it to Jesus. It put, a, it put a, a thing in their brain that they didn't want there, you know, like they were doing it to a male. And, uh, and I, I suppose they were pretty much done. Then they decided, you know, uh, we've got to torch the evidence. And by that, they met the car and her. And so now they, were, they got in the car and they were going to drive to a place where they could torch her in the car, eliminate all fingerprints and all evidence. And can you imagine? And she was praying up a storm. All of a sudden, this uh, police car pulled up in back of them and pulled them over, and she was saved. The thing went to trial. And uh, it was quite miraculous, though, how the police pulled her over. But uh, that's another story, and I want to get to the forgiveness point. Yeah. And uh, just before it went to trial, she was uh, uh, interviewed by one of the local newspapers, Pasadena, uh, California. And she said, you know, uh, the only way I could deal with this was if I forgave them of what they did. Now that would be... <laughs> that would be hard, wouldn't it? Yeah, she said, but I had to forgive them. When it got to trial, <coughs> defense attorney, that is, the attorney for the accused, yes, yes. said, Th this couldn't have been a horrific rape like you claim. Look what you said here in the newspaper, and I quote, I forgave them. How could you forgive two, two men who, you, who do what you said they did? It, it is not possible. And she looked at the defense attorney and she said, I didn't forgive them for their sake. I forgave them so I could move on. And the judge, interestingly enough, said, amazing, I know exactly what you mean. And, uh, and then she said, forgiveness is not excusing the other person. It's not eliminating their responsibility for any crime or anything that they need to repay. It just allows me to move forward with my life. I can't be stuck in that moment in time. I have to move on and forgiveness is the only way. And I thought, I've never heard a better story about forgiveness than that one. That's true. Now this is Church of Louis Bar and Grill. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't get more churchy than that. No. Well, this whole thing has been about uh, how you think of the other person, about forgiving and moving on. You know, I, I, I wonder if this applies, Dave. I'm thinking about you have a pond out behind your house, and you got a little piece of wood floating there. And uh, every time you walk out, you see that. And then one day, you decide, I'm going to sink that. I don't want to look at it. So you tie some rocks on it, and, and you submerge it. It's still there. 
but it's not a focal point in your day. And, and I'm thinking about when somebody asks, well, how do you forgive and forget? I say, well, who said forget? Right, right, who right. Who said forget? Yeah. No, all, no. all I'm saying, I'm not saying that suddenly a miracle's happened and, and I'm saying, what rape? What men? Right. No, it's not that. I'm just saying that I intentionally moved this from my daily stuff. Right. And I intentionally say, I'm not going to be, when I see you, I'm not going to be thinking of that event. You know she is. I'm thinking of a, a guy who told me that he had uh, made a mistake with his wife when he was a young guy. He says, I'm paying for it to this day. Oh. Well, Ouch. What, what we're talking about is a real Couldn't offense. A real offense, but failure. Every, he's always seen in the light. He's framed. Framed. And down at the bottom it says adulterer or fornicator or whatever it was. I don't even remember yeah. what it was. Some kind of abuse. And it's up to her. He can put his own, you know, he can say, I'm forgiven. But it, it requires a lot. It, it, it just puts a lot of the impetus or onus, whatever, on on her. And I think that's part of the, the whole question. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when Jesus says, Father, forgive them, they know not what, what they, they do. do. I think the fact that you just said it out loud, think of the, think of the power. Forgiving the, the one that nailed you to a cross. Yeah, the that transform is sort of very the, much like your story. Yeah, forgiving the one that raped you. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you can move forward. You're not defined by the moment. Yeah. Yeah. You never forget it, but yeah. you can move on. How many times you know you've done someone wrong and you just dread the next time you see them? Oh, yeah. And they're the ones who say... Well, Jim, how about... Oh, go ahead. <laughs> well, they're the ones who have to say... Don't worry about it. We're going to be okay. Yeah, that's right. They have yeah. to say that. Yeah. Or even with yourself, I was thinking, you know, you could, you, the inability to forgive yourself of something, some dreadful thing you did to somebody, mm -hmm. and then you cannot move beyond that, that spot, I don't think, really, until you say, look, I've got to get over this. I must forgive myself, recognize that I'm capable of better because I acknowledge that this mm -hmm. was dreadfully wrong. Yes. So I don't want to go back to that spot. So yes, I can move forward. I need to forgive myself to go forward. Yeah. But I don't confuse that with forgetting. It's not presumption. No. You're not being presumptuous. You're actually having faith. Right. You're having faith. You believe that God has forgiven you. And I have a friend who did something to some teenage girl when he was a young guy and he says, every day I have to ask God to forgive me for that. Oh no, every day? That's what he says, every day I have oh. to just ask God to forgive me. I said, God doesn't want that. I, I, said, I, I always hesitate, speak for God. Right. But, you know, if you wanted to quote the scriptures, you know, if we confess our sins, he's faithful, he's and, just. faithful and just. Forgive us. Yes, and it's not presumption that allows you to move on, it's faith. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. And I, I think if you have love for others and love for yourself in mind, uh, it makes that faith to move on and that hope of moving on so much the easier because you're grounded in a love of self and others. But real, real. Keep it real. Wow, man, this sure went in a different direction today than I thought. Great conversation. Welcome to Church at Louis Bar and Grill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.